Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. So we know all about Arctic temperature amplification. The temperatures in the Arctic have been warming at much faster rates than the global average. And the main reasons uh, for that are the, the uh, first of all, the, the loss of albedo or the loss of the reflectivity in the Arctic. And this is because the sea ice is declining very rapidly and there's dark ocean underneath the sea ice. So the less sea ice there is, the, the um, more light, more solar energy is absorbed in the summer and causing heating of the Arctic. And also on the land, the less snow cover that there is covering the dark uh, permafrost and rock and tundra underneath then the, the more solar energy will be absorbed by those surfaces and those, are, those things are causing heating of the, the Arctic. Also, the sea ice acts as an insulator to keep the cold air, the air colder and the water underneath the sea ice warmer. It's the thicker the ice, the better the insulation value. And also the snow cover on the land does the same thing. So when there's less and less snow cover, not only is the land darker and absorbing that much more solar energy, but the permafrost underneath is, is thawing. And what we've seen, uh, what's really hit the news in the last little while is that the thawing of the permafrost in the high Canadian Arctic is doing, is, is, is um, advancing at a rate that we did not expect to see uh, for at least uh, 70 years. Okay, so this is a perfect example of melt happening much faster than expected, and in this case, 70 years ahead, ahead of schedule. So let's get back to discussing uh, the, my discussions on the paper that estimates the contributions of the sea ice and the land snow cover to climate feedback and to Arctic temperature amplification, but not just that, but to the sensitivity, the climate sensitivity. Okay, so a doubling of CO2, uh, you know, is expected to cause a certain amount of warming. And when you account for the sea ice and land snow feedbacks in the Arctic, that warming uh, is much more significant. It's much higher than it would be without the sea ice and land snow cover. So this study here, and you can, this is open source, so you can just Google this, estimating contributions of sea ice and land snow to climate feedback. Okay, it came out um, early 2019. So they used, uh, it's, it, they used the National Center for Atmospheric Research, NCAR, uh, now, they used a something called the Community Earth System Models, the CESM, to, to look at sea ice and land snow contributions to climate sensitivity uh, in response to increased atmospheric carbon dioxide content. So, as CO2 levels increase, it causes warming. How much warming? That's the climate sensitivity. Because the sea ice is declining and the snow cover is declining, that causes, you know, much, much greater warming in the Arctic than anywhere else, for one thing. And that warming in the Arctic drags up the overall global warming factor. Okay, so that's the net result. So what they did this is they looked at the radiative forcing and the climate feedback parameter. And in their model, they, they could you know, basically model what we have right now in terms of sea ice area and snow cover area. Then they could remove all the sea ice and see the effect on the climate sensitivity. Then they could remove the land snow cover, keeping the ice and see the effect. And then they could remove both of them and see what the warming would be if they didn't exist. And then they could add them both in. Okay, so of course you can do this in a model, and uh, they got some very interesting results. First of all, they found that the effect of sea ice on the climate feedback parameter, um, the effect of sea ice is larger 
in the effect of snow cover. And this makes sense. I mean, sea ice is declining throughout the year, you know, month to month. The declines are largest in the um, melt months. But snow cover, as I showed you in the previous video from the Rutger Snow Lab, the snow cover over the land has declined significantly in the spring. So April, it's declined. May, a lot. June, a lot. July, you know, a bit less. August, a bit less. So those are the months when the snow cover in the Arctic region is greatly reduced, great, causing it to be much darker, lowering the albedo, greatly increasing the amount of solar energy, shortwave um, radiation coming in, solar radiation coming in uh, from the sun, and it's heating the Arctic like crazy in those months. And we do know that, you know, the presence of sea ice and the presence of snow cover keeps the Arctic cool. You know, when, these, uh, when the energy from the sun is melting these things, temperature stays close to the melting point. You know, when we have this blue ocean event, when we reach a, a, a situation where there's absolutely no sea ice in the Arctic come September, you know, in the near future, say, you know, three, four or five years, you know, at, at, the, at, the, um, at the most, then the Arctic will greatly warm. And, uh, you know, the duration of, of uh, blue ocean, the blue ocean situation will get extended and extended. And, uh, you know, the lifetime of snow and ice in the Arctic is, will be greatly compromised. Okay, this study also found that, you know, one quarter of the effect of sea ice and land snow on the climate, climate feedback parameter is a consequence of the effect of these components on long wave feedback that is mainly associated with cloud change. So what happens is when you have no sea ice, for example, over the ocean, then you get the water will warm more. You'll get a lot more evaporation. You'll get that water vapor rising up and forming clouds. You know, as it rises up, it hits colder and colder air. The water vapor condenses, forming clouds. And these clouds can um, trap long wave radiation that's trying to radiate out from the cold surfaces to into space. And it traps those long waves causing additional heating. So about a quarter of the effect of the loss of sea ice and land snow is not just, it's not just the albedo effect, it's also this long wave radiation feedback effect. And what they found is that relative to the case in which sea ice and land snow are absent, so if we didn't have sea ice in the Arctic, we didn't have land snow, and as we increase the CO2 concentrations, um, the warming would be much less than it is now. So because we have sea ice, because we have land snow cover, the CO2 rise, um, the climate sensitivity rise is, is increased by over 40%. So this is global mean warming. So the global mean war temperature warming is increased by over 40% because simply because of the existence of sea ice and land snow in the Arctic. And of course, as these things melt back and melt back more and more, then the warming accelerates until we have a situation where there's no sea ice first, and then eventually also no land snow cover. Um, and then we're basically in a much warmer world, we're in a much wetter world. They always have a plain language summary here, um, but let's, uh, I basically have tried to explain things and the effect of the sea ice and land snow on the sensitivity um, is roughly additive. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the, the um, results here. Okay, um, so we know, you know, there's lots of papers that show that global warming from increased atmospheric CO2 concentrations is amplified in the polar regions, all kinds of papers. Sea ice and land snow are two important components that contribute to this 
Arctic temperature amplification, primarily from surface albedo feedback and the insulation feedback. Okay, um, other things that, there's other feedback effects that includes the Planck feedback. So warmer surfaces can radiate um, more, long wave radiation, but then the clouds can block that. Changes in water vapor content. Okay, more water vapor, you know, more, much more ocean water exposed, more water vapor, more low level clouds. Um, atmospheric and ocean heat transport. Okay, more and more heat is being transported up into the Arctic by these very, very, um, very, very uh, wavy jet streams. And these ridges of the jet streams are going right up to the North Pole, bringing all kinds of warm air and water vapor. The, the ocean currents are switching. We're getting a lot more heat coming into the Arctic from the, the oceans and we're getting a lot of mixing of the water in the, so there's vertical mixing. So that cold lens of relatively fresh water at the surface is mixing with the warmer, saltier water underneath. And that's causing great um, feed, feedbacks that are taking out a lot of the sea ice as well. And the land snow decline is also accelerating. So all these things are happening. So here's the model. Um, this is for the, the present situation. Okay, so if, there's, if there was no sea ice and no snow cover, then the temperature, the, uh, the one, the, the temperature um, would be, this is in Kelvin. Okay, 290.10. Now because there's ice, it reflects a lot of solar radiation, so that that's what that's what the global temperature would be, reduced by um, 1.21 Kelvin because there's ice, there's sea ice. Now, if because of the snow cover on the land, if you had no ice but just the snow cover on the land, the temperature is reduced but not as much. It's about 0 0.97. So the effect of the sea ice cause keeps the planet cooler than the snow cover does on the land. And now if you have both of them there, which we do, the temperature difference here is about uh, 3.08 degrees. So the presence of ice and the presence of snow, in this case, the net effect is greater than the sum of the parts. And then this is with the doubling, this is a difference with the doubling of CO2 um, my, you know, over, over the pre-industrial generally. And what you see is that because of the because of the uh, ice and because of the snow, and when, when you have both of them, they keep things, they keep global temperatures cooler. So their effects are not just combined to the high latitude regions, okay? Um, you know, and they talk about the effect on extreme weather events here. You know, we know a lot of those things. They talk about the lots of different things. I won't go through all the details uh, but I will show you the the result here, and this is with forget about the you know these scenarios you know eight times existing CO2 and so on, you know with a doubling of CO2, this is with if there was no sea ice and snow cover, this is just ice only, snow only, and this is with both. So the global mean temperature change here is uh, you know over three degrees Kelvin versus over versus two here. So a, a lot of the warming that we're seeing, a lot of the climate sensitivity is because we have sea ice in the Arctic and because we have snow cover. And when you remove both, then you get a lot more um, warming. So this is with uh, this is the warming effect with latitude, with uh, you know in our existing world, but we're losing sea ice and snow cover, so the warming is greatly amplified at both of the poles. Um, whereas if the we didn't have that snow and ice at the pole, the warming would be much more uniform um, across the the planet. Okay, and there's lots of graphs and things. There's lots of different points. Um, this is the uh, situation again displayed in a slightly different format. This is, uh, you know, what's happening with both. So sea ice and snow cover makes, uh, has a huge effect. Thanks.